Today, we're going to take a look at some of the greatest characters, teams, and strategies that you can use in the newest 2.5 Spiral Abyss, as well as talk about how to make the best of the worst situation with certain characters. I have to be honest with you, this newest Abyss cycle is definitely full of surprises, so I want this video to be about the characters and teams that I and a lot of others in the community found to be, well, the best at taking care of the new enemy lineups. Now, without a doubt, Electro and Geo characters, yet again, feel like really good units against most of the enemies, but that mainly has to do with the fact how the final floor is structured, and I know that floor 11 has also changed, but to be frank, it actually feels a lot easier to clear it than the previous cycle, and I'll talk about it more at the end of the video, but for the moment, I'd like to focus on the floor 12 instead. So when looking at the enemy lineups, you would think that the scariest part is right here when going up against the Vicious Brothers, which is a world boss that you can fight in Enkonomiya, and not only there's two of them you need to take care of, but they are also linked together in a way that if you take one of them out, it will revive itself if you cannot take care of the remaining Vishup, which means you kind of need to either have really good positioning of area damage to maintain their health bars on equal loss, or just interchange the attacks and leave them near death to strike the final blows within the short amount of time left. But honestly, with a lot of teams I'll mention later, they aren't that difficult, because unlike their overworld version, they cannot jump on walls, the health bars aren't going to be that big for someone who is a veteran player, and you can mostly keep them close to each other, so most of the area damage will land, and if not, you can still dish out enough and finish off the bishops. So instead, the real problematic encounters will be found when going up against the Golden Wolf Lord and more or less the whole first chamber. Now, the Wolf Lord's biggest challenge is that if your team is unable to take him out in enough time, he will go into his shield mode, and it will take ages to break all three of his summon heads, unless you have a Geo character, and I mean, you can probably do this without Geo, but it's likely there won't be enough time left for three stars. Finally, the first chamber is where I think some of you may find a bit of a struggle. See, the thing is, the developers have been silently releasing new enemies with larger health pools, but if that's not enough, the good old enemies like hilly churls or ruin guards would drop quite a lot of particles at certain times, like when reaching 50% HP or getting defeated, but with the new guys in town like rift hounds, bishops, and even ruined sentinels, they barely give back any energy, so in turn, this makes pulling off certain rotations harder, and it doesn't help that for almost the whole in a Zuma update, we've been getting characters with high energy burst costs. Also, did I mention that all Bathysmal Bishops have this one attack called Cleansing Shower, which can take away a big chunk of energy from an active character? Yeah, and to add on top of this, these bishops have some of the most annoying stagger animations in the game, so using overload reactions or characters who utilize this reaction will have problems trying to chase them when they literally run away when getting beaten. But enough of the context, and let's just look at some of the characters and teams that did really well in this new cycle. Alright, so without a doubt, Captain Beto is going to have a wonderful time in this cycle when using her on the entire first half of the floor because you've got some wolves who take more damage from Electro, two Ruin Graders that will get wiped out from her burst jumping back and forth, and then there's the remaining Ruin Sentinels, who even though drop less energy as I've mentioned before, it's still going to be pretty easy taking care of them. Now obviously, when I talk about Beto, it's not just her that will be putting in the work, since in order to get the best value out of her, you want to build a team that appreciates her burst, and there's nothing better than the classic taser comp you can assemble with 4 stars like Sucrose, Xingqiu, and Fischl. This is a tried and true team that will take care of the first half of the whole floor, but if you want to mix things up, Yaimiko can also be built with an electro charge team, which is especially going to be effective because of the blessing of the current abyssal moon, which decreases enemies electro resistance by 10% up to 4 times, and this can really help shave off at least few seconds to get 3 stars if your team lacks the damage output. Truth be told, the first side of the chamber isn't really that big of a deal, besides the first room that has Rift Hounds, since you can pretty much bring any team that has good AoE damage and just clear it out as fast as possible, so that you have more time left for the second side where the actual challenge lies. And this is where I want to talk about certain characters, or at least one of the characteristics of the unit, that might set you back if you're still struggling in this final floor. Now, as I've mentioned previously, the newest Inazuma enemies give less energy, but if that's not enough, the normal bishops will drain energy from her on-field character if they get hit by this cleansing shower attack, which is going to be this elemental ball animation, and the energy loss is quite big. The active character loses 20 points of energy from a normal or hatchling bishop, while the big ones in the final chamber will eat away 30 points, and usually, they like to do a joint attack, which can total up to 60 energy loss. That's a lot, but luckily, you can avoid these attacks by just relying on iframes from things like burst attack animations, or 
dodging, but if you have someone like Eula, who fronts load a lot of her damage from the burst, usually you kind of set it up so that she's either shielded or getting constantly healed, and just try to do as many normal attacks to build up the final explosion damage, but as you can tell, she could end up hitting by one of these energy sapping attacks that will take away energy and delay her burst activation on the next rotation. So I would say if you are using characters who are vulnerable to attacks, even if they have the support to keep them alive, just be more mindful of the battlefield and keep an eye on one of those energy balls coming out from the bishops so that you can interrupt the rotation and dodge it or just use an iframe instead. Finally, I want to talk about the Golden Wolf Lord and the importance of bringing at least one Geo character. Basically, if we talk about clearing the chamber with three stars, if you bring a team without a Geo character and you're unable to take out the boss fast enough, the Wolf Lord will go into his shield mode just like in the overworld version and then summon three of his heads that will take a lot of time to break if you do not have a Geo character. What's even worse is that you're not getting energy from using elemental skills here, so even after you take care of the shield mode, you might need to spend some time building up the bursts and waste even more precious seconds. Now the good news are is that the Wolf Lord is kind of squishy, so by bringing three really good damage dealers should be enough, while the last spot could be filled by someone like Geo Traveler, who can easily take care of the problem and even provide decent enough damage, although it is clear by now if you have Zhang Li, he's going to be really valuable not just here but for the whole floor, so I would say anyone who has him, I highly recommend to bring him out to the second side of floor 12. Overall, Electro characters like Beto, Yaimigo, Raiden, Fischl are going to love the first side of every chamber, especially Beto, and on the second side, it's going to be important for you to bring a Geo character like the Traveler, Zhongli, Albedo, or Ningguang, who can take care of the shielded face, unless of course, you have enough damage to rush down the boss. We talked about the characters, now let's look at some of the teams I recommend using. So for floor 11, I actually really like these new enemy lineups when compared to the previous cycle, since on the first half you can bring teams like Electro Charged, where at least one or two Electro characters who will benefit a lot from the Leyline Disorder, and you can easily use Electro attacks to break Electro's shields, while the second side I would say is best left for a mixture of Cryo and Hydro, so in other words, even a budget freeze team like Kaya, Rosaria, Xingqiu and Sucrose can be really effective here. The biggest challenge here is just trying to deal with specters who have high health, annoying mobility, and provide low amount of energy after defeating them, while the lecturers as usual need to have their shields broken, so either using vaporized team comps like Child International to take care of Pyro and Electro Lecturer's shields is great, or you can use Freeze Team Comp to get similar results. Now, for floor 12, I would say that generally speaking, the first half basically just needs a team that can deal great AoE damage, so any meta team comp or its budget version like Electro Charge, Freeze, Mono Cryo will get the job done, and you can even use Eula to avoid energy sapping on the second side. Speaking of which, this is the side where you need to bring the big guns into the fight, so Hu Tao, Melt Ganyu, Mono Geo with either Ito or Noel, National Team with someone like Raiden, Xiao Geo are all really good picks here, just keep in mind about the whole fiasco with the potential to lose energy when any of the bishops use their cleansing shower attack, and if it turns out your team's DPS is still not fast enough to take down the Golden Wolf Lord, you'll want to bring one Geo character to take care of his shield face. But as always, even with best intentions, you might not be able to get all stars, and it mostly has to do with the fact these new enemies have a lot more health, provide less energy than usual, and the only fix here is to get better artifacts and be mindful of your team's overall energy generation. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful or interesting, and if you did, be sure to subscribe to my channel and be the first one to see my newest content. I appreciate all of you who support me, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.